it's early January and we're down here with Rosie in Penzance for a Cornish spearfishing trip. Do you often get asked, do you dive sort of through the winter? Well, the answer is we dive when we can. You know, the weather often makes it difficult. In the summer, you can dive every week, you know, a couple of times a week if your know, family and work allows. But in the winter, you're lucky if you get maybe one dive a month with the strong winds, rain, swell coming in. But today, conditions are okay. So, let's we'll see what we can do in there. Let's see what we can do out there. We're going to head to a pinnacle, and basically a small block which is surrounded by sand. And in the summer, it is absolutely full of life. There's sprats, there's pollock, there's bass, you know, there's, there's even lobsters. It's full of life in the summer. But it's midwinter, so I'm just really excited to see what it's like. It could be quiet, but you never know. You never know. You, you don't know if you don't go. And we are really lucky with the weather. Really lucky. And the wind is coming offshore, it's northerly. It's cold, but it's crisp and the fizz looks decent. See you in the water. So we've made it to this little block. Um, haven't dived it since the summertime when it was had a lot of life on it. It's now January, the water's nine degrees. So really interested to see what it's gonna be like. Um, I'm optimistic. I think there's gonna be some life on it. I can feel it. So we're gonna go check it out. The tide is just slackening off. Um, it slacks off at about three hours after high tide here. So uh, the water should be fairly calm. We've got quite small tides at the moment which help as well, so good conditions, time to get in there. Nice big, nice big cod or pollock please. Coming right up. I hope so. I can just make out the top of the pinnacle from the surface, which is quite reassuring when you're quite a long way offshore. I gently fin to the edge of the pinnacle whilst doing my breathe up. I don't want to dive right onto the top of the pinnacle, but I want to dive on the edges of the pinnacle where the fish will be head into the tide. On my warm-up dive I decide to swim about halfway down the pinnacle and perch on this boulder here and just have a good look around. After a few seconds I've seen my first pollock slinking away through the kelp. back to the surface and do my breathe up. This time I want to head straight to the base of the pinnacle. This is where the fish are most likely to be hanging out. I 
I make the gagging sound in the back of the throat and as you can see it draws this big pollock in straight away. Second dive, bang. These pollock make a crazy run after you shoot them if you don't stone them, so you need to let them free spool a bit of line, otherwise they're likely to tear off completely. Here you can see this one has made a right mess for himself. Oh, they don't half run. Wow. But yeah. Good shot. Having a reel with these big boys makes all the difference. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, I'm chuffed with that. So you should be. With one fish on the boat, I decide to dive a different spot. I come round the edge of the pinnacle and I've landed down in the kelp and boulders. And to my amazement, another big pollock cruises straight up. I really wasn't expecting there to be quite so many around in the middle of winter, but this one cruises up to me. I move the gun ever so slowly to make sure I don't spook it. Dispatch the fish on the surface as quickly as I can. Down there, face the pinnacle, just waited for about 10 15 seconds and he cruised in. He did turn away, turn away a bit, but it's pressing fast, it's great, man. It's a great gun. Pleased with that. Beauty. My next fish I didn't actually catch on camera, but it was just the most perfect ambush and a perfect kill shot. Typical, I was so in the zone, I actually just completely forgot about filming, but this fish knew absolutely nothing about it. There's a perfect stone shot right there, just behind the eye, and you can instantly see the color draining out of the fish, and there's no struggle at all. final dive of the day you can see now the light is going down here at 17 meters but I drop back down into the kelp and like clockwork another big pollock just comes out from nowhere and uh, there's four fish in the boat before the end of the day There we go. <laughs> it's cold, it's windy, there's been hailstones, but we have got a great haul of fish. My best ever January haul, I have to admit. Midwinter spearfishing at its best for me. And I can't wait to get eating some fresh pollock. Yeah, I didn't I didn't manage to get my pollock today. They they just were never quite close enough, you know, they're always slightly out of reach. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I got a bit over eager, started to swim towards them the first couple of times. Because you sort of can get away with doing that with Pollock, big yeah, Pollock. Yeah, you can at times. They're not that skitty, they were just very skitty today. Yeah. After we had a quick, quick chat on the boat, I tried your approach. I went down, I waited, and I did see a couple of Pollock. Yeah. One which wasn't really shooting size. Yeah. Um, and another was a shoal, which definitely they were shooting size. There's some big Pollock in there. Yeah. But again, um, they, uh, they they jumped away from me before I could yeah. even get a clear shot into the mist. Yeah, yeah. back at the kitchen. One thing you may have noticed in the video there was that I actually 
uh, gutted these fish straight away. Um, about you know five minutes after I caught them, they were gutted. And the reason for that is the pollock actually spoils very very quickly. That's just one of the best sources of protein right there to get us through the winter. And actually one of the advantages of spearfishing in winter is that there's no cool box required. These fish have been in the boat overnight and, and all day actually. And that fillet is icy cold. The temperature hasn't actually gone above three degrees out there. So it's really nice to uh, remove an admin process there not needing to make any ice. But here's a prime fillet of Cornish Pollock. We're going to get this into the kitchen now and cook something delicious. So it's a few days after the spearfishing trip for the Pollock on the Pinnacle and I'm at Chef Barclay's flat here and we've decided to prepare a delicious meal. I've persuaded Chef Barclay to cook fish and chips again because it was so delicious. I also wanted um, him to give us a quick, uh, a quick overview of the ingredients of the batter and how this process works. So what, what's in the batter? Did you run us past it? First of all, no persuading needed. It was my pleasure to cook this again. I've been, I've been dreaming of this ever since we last <laughs> ate it. It was so good. Um, batter, I'll put the, well Joe will put the description, the actual ingredients in the description. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what goes into it, really simple. Um, you can make with water. I've gone for a beer batter. So I've used a lager. I think I went for Heineken today. But before we used uh, an ale, I would recommend going for a lager over the ale because I think it's a bit more fizzy and it like brings it alive a bit more. Anyway, so we've got lager, almost a can of lager. We've got self-raising flour, bicarbonate soda, salt, pepper, curry powder, and I went for a bit of turmeric, more to add the colour. Now you whisk all of that together, uh, and then in a separate bowl you're whisking some egg whites, and then once the egg whites have really aerated, and they're really like light and fluffy, you add the egg whites into the batter, and mix the whole thing together, and uh, until it's sort of this sort of consistency. I mean, it's gonna be different every single time. You can't go wrong, it's quite a simple batter. Jobs are good. And we'll put the actual measurements in the description. Um, which will remind me as well next time I come to making it. So um, we got the fillets here. A couple of fillets off a nice seven pound Cornish Pollock taken in the middle of winter from a pinnacle some way out to sea. And now we're gonna fry it. And we're gonna sit down and reminisce a little bit about our winter spearfishing trip. So stick around, enjoy it, let's get cooking. It's just ridiculous. What's ridiculous? Imagine if you got the fish this size in the fish and chips shop. <laughs> it's just huge. That's Cornish Pollock Bay. That's huge. There's enough to feed a family. I know what we're going to do. We're going to cut these both in half. Rather than trimming any more, we'll cut them both in, both in half. And we'll just have half each. Look at that. We don't have a pan big enough. There oh, goes. look at that. It looks healthy. It looks very healthy. I'm look at it having a little bath. It looks like it's having a bath. It's having a bath and batter. I'm going to lay it away from me. Wow, we'll right, <laughs> in with the next one as quick as possible. Okay. Wow, amazing. Oh, that's a beautiful colour. Hot on my fingers. No holding back on the chips? No. Am I right? Don't hold back. Wow. Might need 
a bigger plate. Do you think we're enough fish? <laughs> just ridiculous. <laughs> That's half of them. <laughs> That's half of the small one. Okay. On the fish? Yeah, I reckon. You happy so. for that? I'm happy. Wow. I mean, if we're not in for a treat, I don't know what we're in for. This is really exciting. So, so what good. we're in for? A bloody treat. We're in for a treat. <laughs> so, a couple of days ago, this fish was swimming just off the lizard point. At 17 meters on a pinnacle which I discovered a couple of summers ago when we were on a camping trip oh, where, we ca where we camped up the Helford River yeah discovered this pinnacle in summer just thought you know why not try it in the middle of winter mm -hmm. you know why not let's just go back see what it's like and every single dive you'd wait a couple of noises with the throat and just this three or four kilogram pollock would just cruise by. And I will say, actually, for Barclay, um, you, it's fair to say you're quite new to the boat diving, you know? You've mm. spent most of your time shore diving, so, you know, getting your kit on in the car park, walking down to the beach, mm -hmm. very much shallow water spearfishing. How, how did it compare for you, sort of, in a couple of the recent trips we've done, actually, how has it compared for you, sort of being taken out, dropped on a pinnacle, sort of a kilometre offshore, or more, maybe five miles offshore? How, what's the difference? There's a massive difference, because all of a sudden you've got, usually got big currents to contend with, especially if you're going out to a point where we get, tend to go to. You've got the big currents, you know, taking you quite some distance, like 50-odd metres. Yeah. You know, you, you dive down... And you pop up 100 metres, 50, 100 metres away from where you dive down. Mm. Um, also, it can be a bit eerie when you're diving into, <laughs> you're just diving into blackness. Mm. You know, it's not like when you, you know, you five metre dive off the shore where you can see to the bottom and you're just basically snorkelling on the surface. Yeah. And you dive down when you see fish beneath you. Yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a shoal of fish. I'm going to dive down and try to, try to you know, try to hunt them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're boat diving, you're diving into the darkness. Mm. You don't necessarily know how deep it is either because mm. you can't see the bottom. Or well, even if you can see the bottom, then you're relying on, well, we're relying on some app on our phone to say the reef's beneath us. We don't even know if the reef's beneath us, mostly yeah, because yeah. the fish finder's broken. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, we need to get the fish finder or the depth sounder fixed up, but... Yeah, I'm just interested on your perspective mm. on things. This is delicious. Mm. We're right. gonna we're gonna That's do some thing. shallow water spearfishing next, Barkley and I. We've got in the morning. We're gonna go out on the boat on Rosie. We're gonna do some completely contrasting marks. We're gonna go really, really shallow, and I mean literally, we're gonna be diving this deep and just see what's around the coast in midwinter, basically. Have a good, uh, have a good sniff about and see what we can find. The weather's been amazing recently. It should be quite, should be calm, should be clear. So we'll bring that video to you in a couple of weeks' time. But for now, see you then. Mm. See you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>